Hi, continuing on our uh, 5G series and focusing specifically on the differences with LTE. Um, this is the second in this uh, series and I'm going to cover a new idea in 5G which is kind of makes it different from LTE called as the bandwidth parts. My name is uh, Srikanth and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So if we look at one of the motivations for bandwidth parts, uh, one of the challenges in LTE uh, was that all LTE handsets had to support 20 megahertz bandwidth. In fact, ironically, uh, the base station side and the deployment because of various reasons could go as low as you know to 1.4 megahertz of bandwidth. But all UEs had to support 20 megahertz uh, and in different deployments you could have bandwidth ranging from 1.4, sometimes 5, sometimes 10, sometimes 20. Okay. Now this is counter to the usual thought process that you want to make uh, the complexity or the flexibility with respect to uh, handling things much more uh, easier at the mobile side than at the base station side. Okay. And one of the reasons why it had to support up to 20 megahertz bandwidth uh, are the sheer fact that if, let's say, a base station was deployed in 20 megahertz, certain very important pieces of information like the control channels and the associated sort of signals to be read or the channels to be read will be spread out over the entire bandwidth. Okay, so which means that you basically do not have a single LT carrier greater than 20 megahertz because that will become very difficult to manage. In fact, the only way by which we can really increase the net bandwidth of the transmission is to go for things like carrier aggregation, which has its own challenges. Okay. So to kind of attack this problem, 5G NR proposed the idea of bandwidth parts. Of course, there were multiple angles to this. Uh, in fact, one of the challenges that LTE faced uh, when accommodating an IoT specification called NB-IoT was that they had to re-device a lot of things, okay, because the NB-IoT uh, did not even support the basic 1.4 megahertz bandwidth, and so that involved a lot of work, okay. And of course, there were also a lot of challenges when uh, LAA was uh, deployed because unlicensed band has its own challenges. So keeping all this in mind, let's see a big picture of where all bandwidth parts can help in. So bandwidth parts can help from multiple perspectives. The one which we have talked about is the carrier bandwidth can keep on expanding uh, while the users could have smaller bandwidth based on application, maybe based on cost, complexity, etc. They could also dynamically move to smaller bandwidths based on the need, energy consumption and so on. And as we know, 5G NR also has the different numerologies potentially for supporting different applications. We could keep them isolated in a bigger bandwidth. Uh, we can accommodate uh, non-contiguous bonding. We could even accommodate something which we don't know as yet. As you know, uh, usually we talk about backward compatibility in a standard, but now forward compatibility uh, to kind of accommodate new things, which we learned as we evolved LTE when we hit IoT, we didn't quite have the plans for accommodating an IoT waveform smoothly in the LTE scheme of things. 5G wants to kind of be prepared at a waveform level. How can 5G NR be prepared for handling this? Let's see a few details of bandwidth parts in 5G NR. So 5G NR as of today in release 15 allows us to configure four downlink and four uplink bandwidth parts for a UE. Okay. They can be of different sizes, they can be overlapping, uh, depending on TDD and FTD, there are links between downlink and uplink. Uh, so a lot of flexibility, a lot of configuration potential for managing a variety of advantages that we talked about. Uh, a station will have only one active bandwidth part at a given time, uh, which means that one of these, for example, let's say this area, that would be where it would get its data unless it is required to switch to one of the other ones, which is also made quite smooth and easy. Uh, once you prepare the configured bandwidth parts, then it's quite easy to switch between the different bandwidth parts based on variety of context. 
So this picture kind of gives us an idea of how we start with the, our very initial bandwidth parts are the areas where we observe the initial signals, okay, where we get RRC connected. And once we get RRC connected, we can have configuration which can tell us about various other bandwidth parts that we might have to be ready for. Uh, we might be served at any given time by one of these bandwidth parts. We can quickly move to another bandwidth part as fast by DCI scheduling, uh, which can make it very fast. And, um, and if we don't have much data in that, we can fall back to a lower default bandwidth parts, either explicitly mentioned or implicitly as a part of the configuration. Okay. So bandwidth parts have nice ideas for helping us manage a variety of problems and have enough flexibility and uh, we hope that this will help 5G stand out as compared to LTE, especially as we go and accommodate uh, newer applications, wider bandwidths, etc. Thanks for listening. Uh, please take a look at our website for more information. Thank you.